my name is Lauren and I just wanted to share with you this really cool recipe that I have for protein bars. I know it's a little weird, I make my own protein bars, normally you buy them at the store, but honestly, they're so much better when you make them yourself. Okay, so I really like this brand of protein bars, they're called Quest Bars, and I think, I think I was in high school, I started eating them, and I absolutely fell in love with them, like I would eat them every single day and they were expensive. And so I'm like, okay, you know, like I've, I've got to figure something else out. And so I started um, looking online for recipes to see if I could find something. Like I Googled how to make Quest Bars and um, some things popped up and I'm like, okay, I might wanna try this and I wanna try this. There was one recipe that I found that swore up and down that it was the exact Quest Bar recipe. Like it tasted just like Quest Bars. And now something you have to know about Quest Bars is they're really low in sugar and they're really high in fiber. And that's really rare for a protein bar. Um, so I found this recipe and it used something called Vita Fiber. Um, it's a type of fiber, the, the brand was Vita Fiber. And um, it's like a syrup. It looks like corn syrup, um, and they, they, the website said that it was what Quest Bars use in their protein bars. It's how they, they are so high in fiber and so low in sugar, because the fiber itself is sweet, and it's a consist consistency like corn syrup, so it's like a sugar, except it's not sugar, it's fiber. So um, I was like, okay, I don't normally order things off the internet, but I ordered this, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna try it. And so what you need for the protein bar is the Vita fiber, um, the a protein powder, any kind of protein powder that you like. I use a kind that's called PE Select, um, and it's a blend of whey protein and casein. And the casein, what it does is it's, the casein is, the, is a slow, slow digesting uh, protein. It's the slowest digesting protein, so it takes your body the longest to process it, and it keeps you feeling fuller longer. Um, so I use a whey and casein blend. Um, it tastes good, too. That helps. So the Vita Fiber, the protein, cocoa. I use cocoa. And then whatever add-ins I want, um, chocolate chips. Uh, I make my own filling sometimes, like a cookie dough or a cream cheese or anything that I want to like add to make it taste better. Um, so what you do is you get a pot. Oh, and you, you'll need water too. Um, you get a pot and you take one and a half tablespoons of Vita fiber and a fourth a cup of water. And you mix it in the pot and you bring it to a boil. And you let it boil Honestly, there's not really a science to it. I haven't measured it. I just know when it looks right in the pan, it starts um, bubbling and like the, I don't know, it gets, it gets thinner in the pan and it, it almost sounds kind of shallow. Um, it doesn't sound like it's a full boil anymore. And I know it's right. And so you have another bowl and you mix the two tablespoons of cocoa with the protein powder, and uh, you, one scoop of protein powder. Did I say two tablespoons of cocoa? Yeah, two tablespoons of cocoa and a scoop of protein powder, and you mix it in a bowl. And then um, you, once the the vita fiber and water mixture is done, pour it in the bowl, and um, then you mix it up. Sometimes you have to. Sometimes I have to add water. Sometimes I don't. I guess it depends on how much you boil it, how much it boils down. Um, but you add, you, you mix it until it's like a thick consistency. You don't want it too dry and crumbly, um, but you want it, you don't want it too runny either because then it's like soup and you don't want a protein bar soup. Um, so you mix it, I normally end, I start mixing it with a fork and I end up mixing with, end up mixing it with my hands. Um, but you mix it until it's done and then I take a sheet of aluminum foil, um, long and thin, um, and spray it with cooking spray or some kind of nonstick spray, and um, then I'll take the protein bar in my own, in my hands, and I'll form it 
into a bar. Um, you can use a mold. A bar is, I mean, just if you're using your hands, it's cheaper and faster and easier. Um, so I make it into the shape of a protein bar. Oh, and you add in whatever kind of add-ins that you would want in your protein bar. You add that in, and then, um, yeah, you just make it into a bar, and then you wrap it up in the foil, and you're good to go. You've got a protein bar. So you need to try it. It's a really good recipe. Um, if you like protein bars, if you don't, then I'm sorry you just listened to me talk for the last five minutes. Anyway, enjoy.